So as a mom, it's so hard. I'm always trying to keep my kids engaged scholastically to, to keep on reading, to keep their math up. Um, we just graduated from kindergarten and I literally accosted one of Brooks's <laughs> teachers, Jenny Morgan. She's phenomenal. She's amazing. She's a great leader and teacher on the West Side here in LA. And so today we're gonna be talking to you and she's gonna be giving you tips on how, to, how the parent is supposed to react to the teacher tips you can easily do on your own, help your kids not summer slide. It's like ask your teacher day, except <laughs> I'm getting to ask his teacher. We're on our way back to school. Mm -hmm. We're cutting to September. What advice mm -hmm. can you give parents in those first couple of weeks to, of school that can help them bridge that awkwardness between a parent-teacher relationship? I think just the most important thing is to just be present and to introduce yourself. And even if you are a busy working mom or dad and you are unable to be physically present, when, when you start a new school year, it's just making sure that the teacher knows I am here for my child. I want to build a partnership with you as the teacher. My goal is to make sure that there's open lines of communication. Please let me know if there's anything that I can do at home to redirect behavior, or if you're noticing something that you're worried about, please know I'm, I'm wide open to that feedback. I think parents get in a tricky spot where they expect and don't communicate and then all of a sudden your expectations are not met because, because you're, you, you haven't know. communicated. And so if you front load a teacher and say, hey, we are so excited for this school year, even if it's an email, even if it's a text, whatever you can do in your time, if it's, if it's something that you is on your chest where you say, I really think that my teacher needs to know this before we even start the school year, go in or email and say, hey, we're so excited for this year. I just like would like for you to know this little thing about my sweet child and or high school or whatever age college student. I think what's really important is to just open the lines of communication and just re recognize that they have a lot on their back. You clearly have a lot on your back as parents, but just opening up the lines of communication is so important at the very first. Yeah, I always day. say, I'm like, if you need to tell us something, good or bad, mm -hmm. we're open for it. We're open to hear it. And I think that really resonates with teachers mm -hmm. because they do need to give you feedback. And some of it's not good and some of it is good. So you've got to really, really be willing to kind of let them know from the beginning, it's okay if it's bad. What is the, I guess for me, like I want to try to always set my child up for success. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it for him. I mm -hmm. can't take the test, but I do want to set him up for success. What's a little bit of the difference between like setting someone up for success and being like a helicopter parent? I think giving your child the freedom to fail. This might not be a very favorable comment, but when your child fails, it is such a teachable moment. It is a moment to pick themselves up by their bootstraps, realize that, oh my gosh, my parents support me no matter what, and I am going to be okay, and I'm gonna learn from this experience. Maybe I didn't study my, my spelling words hard enough, or maybe I didn't work on my US history report long enough. Time management is the biggest part of this. That's really, where we're focusing the tribe of five. I still focus on it, but it's there's so many components to being a student and also being a parent. And when the two work is when a parent says, no matter what, as long as you did your best, that's all that we care about. That's one of my Thank next you. questions is how, as a parent, when you're really mm -hmm. frustrated yeah. and you're really like, we've got to focus, we've got to focus, mm -hmm. is there anything like... You can give advice on that. Something I've learned, and again, this is speaking to younger kiddos, um, is to be eye level with eye them. Eye level. When you are speaking, not above them, but you're eye level with them, you're looking right into their eye and you speak very calmly, and you just say, I need you to listen to me. This is your job right now, and it is not a discussion. And you get up and you walk away, and if they don't do that, then you then you discipline. There's a then there's a consequence. You've made your eye level. You have communicated very clearly what you expect, and if they don't respond, you have to discipline. 
And I'm not saying, you know, go to your room. I'm saying there has to be a consequence and whatever consequence it is for your family. And that's the one thing I've learned, like we talk about, like if we don't do something, there is a consequence. The thing about as a parent, that is actually not their fault is that I sometimes just don't follow through. And I got given that advice from a great woman here. She's like, well, did you let them have three videos? Yeah, I mean, and she goes, right there, you've lost. Okay, right there on the, yeah, maybe, you've lost. So follow through. Yeah. So summer slide. Yes. So I learned this actually from Ms. Morgan. The summer slide is when things just, their IQ just kind of drops a little. It's like kind of slides back down. They're like on a water slide. They're, They're like chillaxing slide. in summer. So what are some of the things, and she's really good about giving worksheets. And so if you could say a little a few things about what parents can do for the summer mm -hmm. slide, and also a few places you like to go that parents, even though they can't have the opportunity to talk to you, could go and do different interactive um, you know, work on a computer or an iPad. I think that the most important thing, read, 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 read. Read as much as you can you're with your kids. Make sure that you're setting a timeline. If obviously if you have like older I kids. literally set a timer now. Yeah. We have this rule at school yeah. that we have to do 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. don't think 20 minutes is hard, but when you have three kids, you're working all day, mm -hmm. you have help or you don't have help. Heck, they always want you anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Set a timer. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that you mm -hmm. guys said on your little worksheet. Please read every day with an adult 20 minutes. Yep. This is from um, a student, uh, from a parent. How do you best love to communicate, email or text or in person? I, I'm open. It's really what works best with the parent. Okay. We have an open door policy at our school, so any parent that wants to come by and talk, we are always open to it. Um, of course, we'd like a little advance notice, maybe setting up a conference time is great. Um, if you can't physically be there, email is great. Phone calls are great. Texting is great. Again, I go back to open lines of communication from with your teacher from the very get-go and just let them know that you're in this for a partnership. And I think, again, front-loading with um, kindness and grace is always a nice way to start the school year, um, but also realizing that we are human, you're the, you're human just like you guys. Oh my gosh. I mean, you guys are angels. I really Thank mean you. that. And you know, appreciate your teachers because they can have long lasting effect on your children. Again, I remember my best teachers. I do. I, I, I didn't love my, I didn't love learning about history, but I loved my teacher who taught me to love history. Mm -hmm. And then there I was living in Paris you know, mm. all these years later in London and, and learning about the culture and the mm. history. And I'm like, Mr. Smith, I loved you. I missed you. And I, you know, it's interesting. My French teacher, I got to go to France for the first time. I'd been on an airplane once in my life when, mm -hmm. I, when I was a junior in high school. And now, you know, I got to learn French and my French name was Jacqueline. And, hey. I, and I loved, <laughs> I loved Madame Span. But truly, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. We're gonna have I'm, her back throughout the year. Yeah, so to kind of see like, you know, cause I know you guys have so many questions. Mm -hmm. Again, comment below, let us know. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. I literally, mm -hmm. she was packing up the classroom. <laughs> All right, well, we love you. Comment below, let us know your thoughts. Um, and thank you for watching. Thank you, thank Jenny. You. I love you. I love you.